Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. I'm going to talk to you today about mould, not the black stuff that grows in your bathroom that seems to be so friggin' tenacious you can't get rid of it, but the uh, sort of mould where you want to copy this battery enclosure because you want to put some electronics in it and sell those electronics. That's the kind of thing. Or maybe miniatures. Maybe you're into little citadel miniatures or something, or you want to make lots of little army men, whatever your purpose. I've made here a silicone mold or rather I'm in the process of making the mold because I've made the object in there and I've pulled the silicon and I did intend fully to make a video on this but rather than make a video right away I wanted to actually learn the process so I didn't make a video which is kind of annoying for me because now I'm going to be showing you effectively the results of that first stage but hopefully today we might even be able to do some resin casting that's that's at least a very similar sort of process so I've got my object now which is encased in this like uh, Han Solo encased in carbonite and I have to extract it so just sort of very briefly I've made an object imagine I've made this and I've basically inserted it in this blob of um, silicone. The idea being that I'll be able to take this out and in the future I'll be able to put like a PCB in there, pour in resin and it'll come out like that in a block of resin, PCB. So a very cheap enclosure for prototypes because I'm you know into prototyping in a big way right now and it's a very economic way. People saying why are you bothering with that? Why don't you go straight for you know cases? I want to just see if the cases will fit first, make sense. So if you've got a 3D printer, of course, you can make the blanks with what well, I've got and you'll be able to see what that looks like. So I'm going to try to very gingerly remove it from this. It wasn't particularly good to use one of these because it's corrugated and I'm not sure it's going to plop out in any sensible way. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. But I don't really want to cut it too deeply with a blade either right now because I'm not sure what that will do. So I'm going to try to peel it. Yeah, I think you can peel it. Oh, there you go. That works, doesn't it? Spider-Man, Spider-Man, very versatile Spider-Man. Oh wow, look at that. Spider-Man, I love you. This smells really good though. For a sort of you know resiny catalyst based product, it does have a rather nice smell. Mmm. And you can see it's actually captured a lot of detail there, hasn't it? If that's it's captured all that detail from the vacuum molded plug, so uh, well cup. So that's really cool. Look, 0.2 litre mark right there as well. So if, I'm going to try to extract this. Now, some people say that it should be flexible enough that you can get the object out, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to come out one go because it's quite a large thing in there. So I'm just going to maybe try to remove some of the bits piece by piece. So I know that this... Uh, nope. <laughs> ought to remove from the top is what I was going to say, but it didn't. So let's try again this way. It's pretty well glued in there. Wow. Now, I, I expected this shape to actually come out quite easily. So, yeah, I'm going to have to cut the mould. So I'm going to try to be very cautious. And I think my object's going to be, if you can imagine, it's basically, I'm going to try to draw it here, this shape. Yeah. So I'm going to try to put a cut through the middle there and I'm going to try to keep the cut clean because otherwise we're going to get a mark on the object when you actually cast it in resin. Let's go. This is an interesting process, isn't it? Oh, it's surprisingly um, hard to cut too. But it is cutting. So it dawned on me when I uh, made this also that if I can get more of these Spider-Man cups, I'll be able to set this whole mold mold in a Spider-Man cup in the future and then pour resin in on the top. So that's kind of a cool way to do this. Depends how many you're really going to do this way, seriously. Uh, I kind of wanted it to be one clean cut, but it really didn't go deep enough. So I'm going to push through again. Maybe a scalpel might be better. Oh, look. It is in there. You can see it. Ooh. So if I'm getting here, cut that 
bit there. Mm. So now I can decide, do I want to cut this all the way through or just keep it? Keep it like a half mold, half, yeah, half an opening on it. Oh, there it is. Uh, huh. And that's it. Look, that's your mould, basically. And that's the object. Wowee. So you can see there, That's this is basically, and I'll show you the PCB that goes in that. This is a prototype for a kind of more commercialized version of a booby cortex. So a booby cortex will be living inside an actual enclosure. So what I've done is I've made the plug these things. So these will be the bits where before you put this into the mold you'll put a little bit of plastic or something over here, a cube, to stop resin going in there. And maybe you might put a bit of tape over there over the end. And the idea is you'll basically put that in and then fill it up with um, epoxy resin and uh, that will be uh, all good. Um, it should that, yeah, that basic green bit will be the bit that will be entirely made out of resin. So then that resin will be probably black or a different colour. And your object will be basically over moulded. So the same way you get rubberized over moulding now. So looking at this though, I'm kind of... I don't want it to split in a random way, so I'm going to just continue the cut, I think. I think that's the sensible thing to do. And as I can see where I'm cutting... Oop, there you go, so that's the two halves. So you should... This is the theory now, this is where the, the rubber meets the road. This bit is designed to be detachable in my design if it will please detach if it doesn't detach I'm going to be in trouble actually so I really want it to detach I'm going to grab it with some of these I need this to come out oh no not to worry I've got other USB wires I can cut I didn't want to sacrifice another one the USB wire gods um, yeah but look that's cool you can even see the USB symbol there you look closely, I'll zoom you, zoom you in, just to show you the level of detail here. <laughs> um, it's almost unfortunate to get that texture in there from the 3D print, but if I, if I wanted to, for example, now I could cast another one, which would be a clay version or a, a plaster version of this, and then I could smooth that down, sand it, and then cast again and do it. You can just keep going round and round with this. Right, so that's the USB thing. And uh, you can see that that USB is correctly oriented. So the idea is it'll sit in like that. And then you'll just put that on there. And then fill it with resin. So you're asking yourself or asking me, how are you going to fill it with resin? You haven't got a bloody hole. Well, that's true. I don't have a hole. Mmm, smells good. I should have probably... Uh, put a uh, straw or something in here to act as a sort of filling hole but um, I, I think I'm pretty sure I could just get something in retrospectively and I'm pretty confident looking at this now that'll be possible too so what I might do is decide I have to decide oh, it's, it's not shutting anymore it has to has to go in right obviously um, what I need to decide though quite seriously is which way round it's going to go in the actual mold I think it makes sense to have it going in this way yeah so the liquid will go in the top and just settle and fill up from the bottom however I do have you can see there this port and we don't want this port getting blocked up but you know I think it should be okay because I've designed that with that in mind so it should butt up right up to that which it sort of seems to but if necessary I think I'll just make sure that these um, these are plugged up with something, not sure what, but I'll work something out. Let's see. Um, hmm. I'm definitely going to leave them closed because I want those screws all the way in because I made sure the screws are in that position, but I don't know yet. I'm just going to put some a little something something in there, not sure. Maybe a bit of hot glue, and that's something I can peel off quickly, like a band-aid. 
So if that's going to go in there, it's going to be filled. It's just got to decide where to fill it, really. Hmm. And to do that, I probably will end up just making a hole that goes, extends all the way through to somewhere to the outside world, really. Cut a channel. Probably the easiest place to do it would be be nice to do it from the top but it probably makes more sense to go through one of these faces here so it'll just be in the back of the side just because it'll be easier probably just to sort of cut that extra resin off and sand it flat in the end because you're going to want it to sand it flat and that's probably the most likely place where you'd have a uh, sticker or something so I'm going to have a little play with that and then uh, maybe have a go at casting it all out right first thing I've got to do before worrying about that bit though is, is kind of considering this thing yeah that bit I forgot I actually epoxy resin that end in that's why that snapped you see that brown block that's sort of to give the whole mold clearance for the jumpers in there and also to sort of stop any resin getting up the jumper pins so I've got this I found this in the sort of garage to be honest with you it's just something the kids had one of their whatever they've got craft sets and I just thought I was gonna just if I can trim that up I can probably make something about the same dimensions as that really and it's just going to fit in there as a sort of jumpery thing so I'm just going to make a rough cut to start with actually that's probably all I, I probably don't need a massive amount right now so what's important is to make sure this is about the same dimensions as that um, but also the same sort of height height is important here I'm just going to cut it down to be cube shaped. Yeah, that's looking, starting to look pretty good in terms of cubage. I'm just going to see which edge looks the cleanest. Um, you can see it, I'm doing this highly, highly accurately. There we go. That will be there. And we'll need a little bit more of this edge. Ooh. Don't want to make it too jaggy though. That's not going to want to extract itself when you've got the resin all over that. This would be nice out of a material like silicone. It is a little bit deformy. It's sort of changing as I'm sort of squeezing on it, which is not good. I've already compressed it now. Let's, tr let's see. I was hoping it would be something that would work, play nicely with these jumper pins. Ah, no, it doesn't play nicely at all. It doesn't want to play. Yeah. In fact, they really don't want to perforate this. It's amazing. You'd have thought that it would have been really good. Let's see how close I was anyway. Oh, that would have been so good in there. Right, maybe uh, back to the drawing board, or I'll try to get a, f a small drill and drill these out so they'll go over that nicely. The things I do. It's not right. <laughs> Yay! I think that'll work. That looks all right. Yeah, give it a go. <laughs> that is cool. Too cool for school. Nice. <laughs> pushing in the pegs, pushing in the pegs. We are having lots of fun. Push in the pegs. Squeeze you up tight. No, not tight enough. There was a bit more faffing because I realised there's a gap here which wouldn't be good for me. I don't want anything there. So I'm learning a lot about next time when I make these, how I need to make these negatives or whatever you want to call them. So yeah, I've added a bit of purple foam in there. But apart from that, everything else is looking pretty good. Pretty much how it needs to be. So... My next stage really is to work out how I'm going to fill this and I've decided I'm going to cut a channel in it. That's the way to go and I want it to sort of lead to the top and 
this is definitely something you don't want to do afterwards. I wish I had a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a wax candle or something I could have moulded in there and stuck to the side of this like a tube and then put that in. But, you know, that's fine. And uh, I think I want it to come out of the side because I kind of feel it'll be easier than messing with this. And I kind of want the USB stuff kind of intact, holding everything together because the USB is really acting as an anchor for this. So I'm just going to try to do something uh, here. Maybe if I can come out at some sort of oblique angle, that would be good. So uh, here it is, here it goes. And I'm aware it's going to cause a bit of a mark here, but there's not really much I can do about that. Ah, blade. The blade was trying to come out then. There we go. I'm just going to try to take that fillet out. Oh, don't slip when you're doing this. Be very careful. Although I have to say, this uh, RTV is a bit fleshy. It's a bit, it does feel like flesh, this stuff. There we go. So I'm hoping that'll be enough. I could probably just make that a tiny bit deeper there. I've got, I don't really know how liquid this uh, resin is too. That's a big problem. I kind of assume it's just gonna pour in, but it might be really thick. And if it is, again, that in itself is gonna be a big problem for us. So just gonna make that channel a bit bigger. So what goes on in this bit is doesn't matter. We can make that as big as we want. Ordered some new scalpel blades. Wish they arrived before I started this. Oh. Okay, I think that's enough faffing. I don't want to break my mold, so. Yeah, if you're doing it, do it in advance. That's definitely a good advice, I think. It won't be such a mess as well. That could affect the durability of the mould, having all those rough edges and cuts and stuff. Yeah, Not nice. But there you go. That's done. Let's have another quick last second check on this thing. I'm going to just extract it a bit and then push it back in a bit. Yeah. It Seeing how deep everything goes. I want to make sure it's kind of pushed in as far as it's supposed to. And I don't think this is quite doing what it should because it's not quite in the original position when I, uh, I cut it and I originally sort of put it in. So give it a bit more room. Oh, sorry about that. Almost there. Again, a lot of fettling involved. I've just got this tiny bit of it's actually dragon balm tiger balm but i just wanted to put a tiny bit on the usb port here just to stop any mm, smells wonderful any resin getting in where it shouldn't on that usb port well, there we go so got the usb port in got my block of stuff got my channel cut i think i think i'm all set really it, it does fit and uh yeah i mean the, my only worry is that maybe what if it's too far in the mold in one direction and uh, you know like this bit touches the back of the mold and doesn't sit right because of the you know it sits at an angle or something There's, i can't really help that right now it's not quite perfect because of the angles of these things but it's the best i can do and in a future version i might be able to put a little spacer here if i was really that concerned so it'd push against something but you know okay that's v1 let's do it i think it's time to go so <laughs> It's going to clean those off and you can see they're pretty nice and clean and they should fit they should fit pretty seamlessly um, when they're aligned up and they do I mean that's not bad at all so I could just put tape on that really but I think I'm going to try to put it back into a spider-man cup get one of those 
again, just going to give it a last second feel around just to make sure I think that is as good as it's going to get. And then plop that in there. So my real hope is that the resin we've got will get down that hole. So I'm going to go mix some resin. Apparently, well, I say I'm going to go, I'm just going to do it now. Just sat next to you. The resin is here. Boom and boom. Apparently it's basically equal parts. And I've got another Spider-Man cup here. And I've got a mixy thing. And it says apparently it will take an hour, which is not too long. And we shouldn't need too much because if you imagine we're only doing the volume of something that size. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it in two cups too so we can see. Fortunately, it does feel quite liquidy, actually. It's a, a very liquidy feeling thing. Um, I'm just wondering now if I'd be better taping these, because you can see there's a very slight gap between them here. Tape might be a bit better, because it might seep, but although at the same time, it might let the air out. I'm going to go for broke and leave it like that. I think that's fine. Shake that up. So that's part B, the, cat, the I'm guessing. I don't know if it, what, what's catalyst and what's not, really. It doesn't say. So to aid measuring, um, remember we're just guessing here on volumes, I'm not really. I'm going to go up to the kind of line in the Spider-Man cup. There is a sort of little blue line there. Now I do have another kind of resin that might be thicker. It's a tougher one, and I'm not going to use that today. And also I do have colorant to add to the resin, so it's not kind of a clear. But again, I'm not going to add that today because. Oh, a bit too much, a bit too much. Pour a little bit back. And the reason I'm not adding that is because I think we've got enough stuff to worry about. And uh, what I'm probably going to do is probably do another round, another several rounds anyway, and I'm going to change the mix on these. But I probably run out of booby cortexes first before I perfect it. But that's okay. I've actually got a booby cortex V2 design already. So that's something I've got to consider as well. If we're going to go to a V2 design, we might need a different enclosure. But I've got the retro uh, retro net enclosures to do next too. So the retro net enclosure is a little bit more complicated. So as soon as this works out for me, I'm going to get those pre-production retro nets made and off to you all those guys who've been waiting want to be to test them. Not sure how long you're supposed to mix it, but I think that's pretty well mixed. The uh, silicone is quite good because it had pigment in the actual mix, so you could see when it was ready. There you go, quite watery, conveniently. I'll wipe that off me there. I have had allergic reactions to resin in the past. Should be probably wearing gloves. Oh, it's quite warm. It's definitely reacting. So here goes. I'm going to pour that in. <laughs> he said, I'm really aware there is too, I think there's too much gap. I'm just going to wrap a bit of tape around here just to buy a bit more compression before before we pour because we're just definitely not going to have a chance to pour afterwards, are we? Sorry, Spider-Man. I need to make you stronger. I think that's a bit better now. Let's go with that. I'll take the chance. Whoa, that's hot. Really does react. Glad I left a gap. So if you want to, to try to be bubble free in your resin, by the way, try to pour it as high as you can and get it as thin as stream. Probably could have created a better style funnel top, but it's all right. Let that go down. Mm, seems to be slowing down. Oh, crikey, is it actually going thick already in the bloody pot? Look, what the hell? That is weird. This is. What the heck has happened? Bad stuff has happened. 
on account of me being crazy impatient and this piece here it's only been a couple of minutes but look it's just solid now solid as a friggin rock I'm just gonna go and take this out because I'm just so damn curious and we know we're gonna <laughs> this is a pretty high possibility that this will have to be redone now anyway um, got nothing to lose really Let's see if it'll just come out of our spidey cup without taking our solid tape off might have to just loosen that tape oops whoopsie tell you what sacrifice another spidey cup to the uh, casting gods I really don't think I got much in there to be honest it didn't really pour too far in there but it clearly poured enough to be annoying mmm warm um that's cool though that's really cool I mean look at that it's oh, it's it's so cool I I keep saying cool I don't know why that is bonkers though look at that damn it, it's really taken on that texture though that is brilliant I mean I wish I kind of cut those those feet but apart from that that is gonna work that's gonna work out I mean I can't tell about the detail about these ports here and how clean or dirty or whatever that's gonna be but it's just like a plastic thing right we're ready to go let's do this again got our part A and our part B's ready to mix gonna be super quick this time and just throw it straight in okay go I'm not sure how you tell when it's mixed though I'm gonna have to sort of check that out in some sort of instructions maybe set a timer next time but let's assume that's mixed enough Pouring, pouring. I think that's it because it's coming up through there. So that's good pour. Going to just jiggle it. Wish I had something. Look, I'm making so much. I, I got you. Got to really. I could have a way more molds than this. Maybe I'll pour some into here. See, no, I don't want to ruin that. <laughs> Trying to find something to use that resin on. It's getting warm now. Just going to pour a tiny bit more on just to make sure it's got that little bit of positive pressure pushing down on there. Can't believe I only just considered squeezing the mold slightly just to make sure it goes in where you want it. There you go. So I used a rubber band this time because uh, I'm learning already. I'm learning as I go along there. Got my rubber band. Gonna try to ease it out of this. Don't make me have to ruin a third cup. Do you think I am made of Spider-Man cups? Come on, come on now. Come on, fella. No, no. It, no, it did. Hey! There we go. Mm, okay, bit of a separation that time. You can see it's worked its way around. I'm going to be a bit ginger. I don't want to damage my mold. That looks okay, doesn't it? Some interesting pores there. It's got like a few. They look like drips, that wet drips, but they're not. They're just, they're, they're alive. So that's why you want to kind of keep the halves close together if you can. But I'm going to forgive this one because we did a lot of messing on that with the refill. Let's just take it out. Don't want to put too much pressure on the USB. We don't want to break that. But there we go. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So, first things first, I'm just going to do a rough puck pass on everything. Just chop off the uh, the main uh, the main parts because we don't want to uh, have to um, 
fact, it's still a bit soft, so yeah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> right, now I'm in two minds. It's still a bit soft, so it kind of goes well. If it's still a bit soft, now's a good time to probably try to cut away some of the bits we don't want get left permanent there forever. At the same time, I don't want any fingerprints getting sort of squeezed into it. That's pretty good, that one. The real moment of truth, though, is getting the USB out. Oh, come on. No, not come out. And there's a little bit of a hole there where there was an air bubble. That's kind of a bit annoying. Still, let's just crack on. So it does take the shape exactly of the 3D print. It almost looks like a white 3D print. So it'd be sort of good advice in the future, perhaps, to consider making one out of plaster as part of the process just to get rid of that texture. I'm not, 3D uh, prints are really hard to get to like look like non-3D prints in my experience that's the downside but yeah this is but it should be a lot more uh, machinable actually because you can't really sand a 3D print but you can certainly sand resin so I'm just going to cut around our USB port just in case there's something something holding it there it shouldn't be yeah it's that piece of resin there Again, it's soft. You can see I can bend that. I just don't want to put too much pressure right now. So let's leave it and come back in a bit. And there you have it, pretty much a sort of finished product. And I say sort of because it's not perfect and it's not, I'm not quite happy with it, but wow, it looks a lot like a white 3D printed uh, object because it's taken all the same textures, but it's much heavier, of course, because it's solid. It's actually a solid print, but look at that. The port bit came out really good. It's quite uh, grippy. The USB port, not so great there, but what I'd do if I ever do this again uh, or make a new mold for it, I would add more material here because you can see the edge of the PCB. So maybe bring that up a bit more. And also just drip. I used that uh, lip balm or whatever it was, um, but really next time I'm going to put wax, you know, drip candle wax around the USB port while this is connected to it because some did manage to get in somewhere from behind there. And there's a small air bubble cavity here, so got to look out for that sort of thing, but I'm absolutely uh, pretty pleased. I'm going to try to fill that with something. I might pop a little bit of araldite in there and uh, then sand this down and sort of finish it, but it's good. These pins, of course, are protruding. That's kind of annoying, so I'll trim that down. I do have one more board, so I might just try with the same setup again. The uh, Jumpers are a bit tricky. That was really hard to remove. That destroyed the uh, foam, and obviously that foam has left a bit of colouring in there. You can see that purple. So that'd be okay though if you use a black pigment, make this all black. I mean, that's it'll look absolutely fine in black. Um, but yeah, that all actually works. These uh, screw things all work. And if you think about it, I've been messing around with these prototypes, uh, building things, you know, with the PCBs, and I've, you know, maybe damaged a few, actually damaged a few USBs and stuff. This whole process is so quick. You could just do this right away, and if you weren't even concerned at all about the finish, just leave it at this, leave it like that. Um, and that's it. You could just use all your testing, test your prototype, and it's going to be pretty indestructible. That's going to harden now and get harder over the uh, course of the next, you know, half an hour, hour, and... Uh, once that's fully cured, you should be able to sort of sand it and make it nice, finish it, stick label on it, done. Um, yeah, really pleased with the whole process, pleased with the kit. Um, really impressed with this material though, it's just absolutely bonkers. This has kind of uh, changed uh, my life now. I'm going to be casting everything because, you know, in my day-to-day uh, -day activities, I've got the need to make lots of things and... Um, you know, I can now pinch ideas. So if I see a knob off something, I can just cast my own knob to use or cast this, that, or the other, or 3D print parts and have them in stock. So just think of a bunch of these on the shelf. Whenever I need something, I can just whip, whip up some resin and make myself what I need. So yeah, it's it's kind of a whole level of fabrication and a sort of difference. 3D printing is quite cool, but look, this is way faster. I could just make now. 
if I wanted to, I could uh, clone this. You see, like now, I could, or, or you know, really, 3D print something better, including all of these features, and then clone them like several times and make a mold that does like, you know, 10 in one go. That's just not an issue. But it's hard work mixing up enough materials in a small enough volume just to do something like that. It work, you know, you have to work it so quickly. You have to mix it. Um, it's much easier for me to make five of these in one go or 10. So I'm definitely going to be applying those, making some uh, retro net boards soon now, because um, I think we're, we're pretty there of the enclosures. And I think in a pre-production run, run uh, you know, some of these imperfections can be forgiven, really. Look at that. It's, it's actually gone harder now. It's actually almost too hard to cut with a knife. If you recall earlier, I was actually just trimming this back, but now... Yeah, you can't use a knife because a knife will dig in and damage us. We're at sanding stage now. But yeah, hope that's been of some use to you. I will make another video to show you the actual whole silicone side when I do the retro net board so you can see the beginning and the end. Maybe I'll run through the whole process again because we need to do another one with pigment. Um, we're going to try mixing the pigment in and doing all that. So hope that's uh, yeah been useful. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe if you're that way inclined. If you want to be notified when I make a video, hit the little bell icon. And as ever... Thank you for watching. Ah, just a little addition to the video. I thought uh, it would be a bit of fun to uh, to cast out a bit of. Um, oh no, I've got some on me in a different colour. And this is with added ivory pigment. So I wanted something a little bit less horrible that looks like 3D print. And look, there you go, that's a, an ivory pigment. You can it might not seem that much on the camera because of the different sort of coloration, but it's, it's quite the difference between a raw looking PVA type white and uh, something that looks a little bit more like you might have got on an old PC case back in the day. Um, still a bit mushy that in places that's interesting that's because it's not been mixed probably long enough by me unfortunately so I did make a cast though just using the ivory and the reason was I wanted to make a sort of negative that was only using the actual mold itself because what I discovered was you can actually finish these by hand um, whereas you can't finish 3D print. 3D print is too furry when you type to sand it. So because you can finish these by hand, it made a lot of sense to me to test one, test the ivory colour in one go, and two, make myself a new negative basically, a new thing to cast from entirely out of resin so I could finish it all off, make one of these entirely out of resin, finish it all off and get it proper smooth, proper nice, and that way I have something that's better to approach a sort of final design. So there you go, you can see that now. It oh, popped out the mould, there we go. And look, isn't that wonderful? That's basically one of those guys ready to go. Um, but in a colour that's a lot more pleasing. Again, not sure if you can see that at home in the same way, but it's kind of like a mild version. Something that uh, wouldn't look out of place on a 90s PC. So there, jobs are good. <laughs>